Let's look first now at productivity. What productivity is, is the rate at which inorganic carbon is turned into organic carbon. So carbon dioxide is changed through photosynthesis and turned into biological material. And we can do rate estimates of what that has been through time. Here we are in the present day. This is the past. These are several equations looking at the rate at which that's been taking place. Every one of them drops, depending on whose model and which data you use. The most optimistic has this hitting zero 700 million years from now. The most pessimistic has it dropping to zero 400 million years from now. When it hits zero, this means there will be no longer plant life on the planet. It means the biological productivity is stopped. This is the end of the world. 400 million to 700 million based on these models. By averaging all of these, we're seeing some optimistic, some pessimistic. But one of the interesting aspects here, it suggests that not only is it dropping, but it has been dropping probably since the Cambrian explosion. While species diversity has been increasing, biological productivity has probably been decreasing. The Earth is dying. We are dying. Well, everybody in this room is dying. But nevertheless, it's dying in a surprisingly more rapid way than any of us knew. Five years ago, no one would have thought this. This planet is dying. Just get off. <laughs> what affects us, and why is the loss of carbon dioxide so important? It's a consequence of plate tectonics. Why are we losing carbon dioxide? We're losing it because we're building limestones. The limestones themselves become part of the rock record and never get subducted, never get squashed, never get changed back to carbon dioxide. Some does, most doesn't. So over time, we lose carbon dioxide. This is the raw stuff that we build animals and plants from. We're first going to see a change in the types of plants that's already begun. Those fertile fields we see, all those grasslands, that's a really recent invention. It's a type of plant called a C4 plant. It's a type of photosynthesis that thrives only in low carbon dioxide conditions. For the last 10 million years, carbon dioxide has been dropping so radically that evolution has already taken account in building new types of plants. We're going to lose the forests. We're going to go from a forested planet to a grassy planet to a plantless planet. Loss of all plants happens when you head 10 ppm. And when you do that, radical things happen. How long does it take to lose all oxygen on the planet when you lose your plants? Well, we modeled that too. David Catling at the University of Washington was presented this six months ago. And his result is that within 20 million years, all oxygen disappears. Well, how could that be? Well, it is because volcanoes keep spewing out reductants in the atmosphere, and the oxygen binds with those. So 20 million years after we lose the last plant, it's over. And that's it. Animals die out totally. So let's look at number two. This is so grim. Let's look at temperature. And these are temperature graphs from the same type of model. Here we are in the present day. And look, we've been having this beautiful long-term steady state temperature. That's the thermostat, the planetary thermostat, which makes the Earth so rare. My point in rare Earth is that unless you find plate tectonics on a planet, kiss it goodbye for a biological abode. And plate tectonics might be the rarest thing in the universe. But look what happens even to the plate tectonics a billion years from now. Every one of our graphs suggests the temperature goes off scale. As it goes off scale, it starts killing things. These are the heat limits for life as we know it now. Modern day life in temperature centigrade, the kill points for these. You notice the protozoa, algae, fungi, bacteria do much better than animals. We don't do well above 50 degrees centigrade. Maybe evolution can make animals that can, and certainly will, survive at higher and higher temperatures but there become limits at which life no longer exists. Now, one of the real curious aspects is when we began doing the physics of enlarging or heating planets is that at 70 degrees centigrade, an awful thing happens. You lose your oceans. And the oceans on the planet don't boil away. We don't have to get to 100 degrees. But in the upper atmosphere, they start dissociating. Water breaks down. And the hydrogen goes off into space. And the oxygen comes back down in almost unusable form. And we start finding complete loss of the biosphere at this particular point. So lethal temperatures for complex life 
Loss of the oceans through here. Our coupled equations suggest this takes place perhaps a billion years from now. So all in all, the end of the age of animals is going to take place when the plants, we can survive in a plant-free world, but for a very short time, because we can't survive in an oxygen-free world. The high temperatures sufficient to kill animals greater than 50 degrees C. We can expect rapid morphological and physiological adaptations. Yes, many new and short-lived species, and then it's over. So then we have to think about the concept of devolution. As these awful consequences take place, what does the biosphere do? It devolves. It's no longer this great diversification. It's the change, the reversing the flow towards biological complexity to biological simplicity. Ecosystems simplify as species disappear. Lots of new species not lasting very long. The tree of life as we know it now, we have to start thinking about how the tree of life will be pruned. Gerontologists of life we've become. Terrible. So here we are here, right here. This is from my friend Don Brownlee made this diagram. And we started thinking about what goes first. Well, it's the heat tolerant stuff survives. And as the tree of life is pruned, we start losing stuff until we're down here. We were here. How long can humans survive? Can we keep going right till the end? Don't know. Here's a view from my friend, the great artist Alexis Rockman, and his portrayal of perhaps life near the end, the end of the age of animals. And we still have a human footprint here, so we're, we're hopeful. But the whole aspect of this suggests to us that we are in this brief moment. We call it the age of animals. And the age of animals is because of this rising temperature, because of the drop of carbon dioxide sandwiched between the great first microbial age and the second microbial age. Because once animals are gone, we go back to this. Now, the end of the world may take place, in my mind, when animals go away, but it's certainly not the end of life. Earth goes on for billions more years, no oceans. But deep in the rocks, we probably still have microbes. We know this is from a basalt at Hanford. This has been enhanced. Each of these red little blips is a bacteria taken from two kilometers deep. This is the deep microbial biosphere that Tommy Gold first talked about. This is what life will be on planet Earth in these days. It won't be on the surface, but our planet will still be alive in its deep catacombs of basalt, areas where water is not yet dissolved away. And for billions of years, this takes place. But there's always an end to everything, and this will be the final end. This is the age of the sun in billions of years. So about seven billion years from now, the sun gets very large very fast. The sun's brightness here relative to now goes up in a series of spikes to a thousand times as bright and a thousand times over and over and over, over 500,000 year cycles. And it expands very much in size. It goes red and expands out to the orbit of the Earth, just about where the Earth is. So it's not quite known if the expansion eats up the Earth, but the Earth is so close to it, the Earth becomes tidally locked and just gets baked out of existence. That's the end of the world. Well, it's another end of the world. That's probably the end of life. Is that the end of life in the solar system? For those of you who take a religious bent and like the concept of resurrection, when we get to 12 billion years after the formation of the solar system, there's one last hope for life in the solar system, and that's Titan. Titan is a big mess right now of organic chemicals. The Cassini mission is going to go by. Jonathan Lunin from the University of Arizona has championed Titan as the last refuge for life in the solar system, the last place where life once again can evolve. Because when the sun goes red giant, Titan is at the correct distance for the energy to make it a nice Earth-like temperature, allowing the presence of liquid water. It is upon Titan that for a very brief period, we could have once again have life. This could happen for perhaps 200 million years, and then the red giant shrinks back down, we become a dwarf, and Titan life itself dies off. And that's all that's left. Well, this is kind of a grim message. And the problem is, when we look out in space, we see lots of these grim messages. M dwarfs are all over out there. There's lots of evidence of star systems that have gone through their life, have died off, and civilizations, perhaps, that were once there, animals that were once there, are no longer there. 
The message is even grimmer in some results. All that's hundreds of millions of years off. 